Guys, yeah. let's welcome uh, Paulski, Bearski Film to the show, the creator of welcome. the awesome films that we just showed you guys from the, All Eight Stacks and Travis Gibson. Good film, man. It was a good film. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I wanted to join in because uh, I just got too much to type, man. I can't keep up, especially on the cell phone. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, what was really cool, I know you guys were talking about Walter Payton when we were um, – when me and uh, some of my friends were out there in the tailgate of the preseason handing out t-shirts, we ran into these two old guys. Uh, I say old, but older guys that live. You know, not as foster, but um, uh, <laughs> two older guys that lived through the uh, Walter Payton era, and we we asked them, "Hey, what was it like to see Walter play?" And you know, they were both their jaws dropped. You know, they said that, uh, one game he was a kicker and a quarterback. This is Patsky with Bears Ski Film, and we're here at luxurious Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. And we're going to ask Bears fans some trivia questions where they can win a free t-shirt. Can you explain to our viewers, viewers what it was like watching like all the people? Oh, sweetness. Unbelievable stiff arm. He used to punish DVs. Just unbelievable. That was a great blocker, too. Dad. Nobody talks about that. He was awesome. Great. Best player. I, in I, one game, didn't he, didn't he quarterback? And he was a kicker too. He used yeah. to kick too. He had like six touchdown passes or something. Yeah. Yeah. Your question. Yeah. Oh, right. Your t shirt. All right. How many touchdowns did Walter Payton score in the Super Bowl? Zero. Zero. Correct. There you go. He did not score a single touchdown. Yeah. And that was my that biggest regret. His yeah. biggest regret. That was going away. My biggest, biggest regret oh. was that he didn't yeah. give it to the fridge instead of Payton Sweetness. In the game, yeah. and you know, I think what most people fail to realize is, um, didn't Walter get drafted in the late seventies? I mean, this man was 75. about you know, seven years into his career before he had you know uh, the production he did with the Bears that we all know and think about. But he literally yeah. carried that team through their worst years, kept his head up, kept his attitude up, kept his character. Up. You know what? Uh, I, I love this. Uh, this uh, phrase about Walter Payton. Um, you got all these guys nowadays that sit there and have personal trainers that work them out off the field and on their off time and stuff like that. Do you think Walter Payton ever had a personal trainer? He didn't need one. He did not need one. That man was so self motivated that he just he did it. He did it all. He, I I wish hell. I would have been alive to see him was the in his prime. Um, <laughs> Add to that real amazing. quickly. Could I add to that quickly, please? Um, in '82, McMahon's first start was after the strike, uh, so it was technically the third game, but it's like week 11 because they had the player strike. So they a after the game, Walter, of course, took a beating. In the post game, the presser, they're in the locker room, and they asked Walter how he felt, and he said, "I feel better now than I did in week one." He said, I, he said, I worked out every day, and I mean every day during the strike. I wasn't doing shit but working out. So I feel better now even after this game than I did opening day going into it. I mean, that's the testament to what you're saying. Just the guy was just unbelievable, the, the work ethic. I mean, he could have been just saying that, but I, I don't think so. I bet he meant every word he was saying. So, yeah, Walter is – and here's a stat for you. Walter's a rookie in 75. He doesn't have a Pro Bowl lineman in front of him until 85. Until 85. His 11th season. So his first 10 years, and mind you, he breaks Jim Brown's, Jim Brown's record in his 10th season. So he did all of that without a Pro Bowl lineman ever until his 11th season. I mean, that's all you need to know about Walter. And in, in 1977, he was 58% of the offense. The only right. other guy they the had, league MVP. the only other guy they had was James Scott. I think he caught 890 yards or 920 yards worth of passes. And he that shot really a motherfucker. <laughs> None of those guys on that line ever made a Pro Bowl or a Hall of uh, an All Pro selection. None of them that were, were on that line for '77. You know what? It, and it, it, he ran five games over 200 yards, and it, that damn ice in New York. Because he could have, he had to, he could have broke. 
he was probably going to break that damn record. He needed like 182 yards or something like that, Dan. But the way right. the guy was running, the ice screwed him. Bears ended up making the playoffs anyways. Yeah, because the – and then they Bob lost. Thomas finally made a field goal after missing like three yeah. of them earlier in the game. Yep. And then they go and get just annihilated by the Cowboys yeah. after that. But that's still a fun game. If you go back and listen to the commentating when, and I know Johnny Morris is straight lace and always professional, but but God damn it, when Bob Thomas made that field goal, Johnny, yeah. Johnny Morris was like, "We're going to the playoffs!" Like it was, like he lost his mind. It's great. It's the it, I love it. Last time they went, he was on the team, and they won in '63. That was the last time they went. Yeah, I love it. That he still came. You know, yeah. the, the other thing I, the other I got thing, to see every game, and I jumped up and down. Screaming I would like to talk about his probably his, ten out of the fourteen games that year. So, like, why they called him the best ever? I'll shut up now. Should go ahead. Why they called him sweetness? Like he was, he was just so. <laughs> just he was so fluid and his motions were just so beautiful the way he would hold on to the ball with the one hand and do the little the little stutter step and then his sweep the the, the outside sweep was just it was a, a it was a it was a magical thing to watch the pitch outside the pitch out to the right or left him going to the sideline with the ball in the hand and then then he would just find that hole and go right through it. And he just like, where that burst of speed, he wasn't super fast, but he had, you know, he had a great burst of speed and he was so powerful. Just a like beauty, like a ballerina in a way. He's a Lynn Swan. If Lynn Swan was tough as shit, because Lynn was a little bit soft. I'm not going to call him soft, but when the Raiders hit him, you know, he didn't want to get hit. And who would want to sustain that punishment? But Walter did. So I'm saying he's as ever been as graceful as Lynn Swan, but also with a fucking muscle to hit you in the face with his stiff arm. Like he was so tough, but so uh, he could have been a dancer. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, he was either a dancer or a gymnast prior to playing football. Yeah, he was obviously on the soul train thing, but I mean, he could have been a professional, like, no, I dancer. He, like took, took it up in school, is, is what I'm oh. saying. Yeah, he's so he, graceful and, gregar and gregarious and. And Lynn everything, Swan, man. He had the personality and and the ability, everything about the guy. He, like, I, I feel like as Walter uh, Jared's supposed to be on with us uh, sooner than later. He gave a. I feel like I'm saying this like Jared's here, but like I'm not. I'm not sucking up to him or his dad. Like he deserves even now all the praise he could ever get. I mean, agreed, agreed. 